kid, your kid's going to college? Good. It's like, you're in credit card debt? Good. Pick up the phone and sell some stock. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. And I was just like... Gassed up. Yeah. I was Gordon like, Belfort. So, so that hit me for the first time today because I was thinking about businesses being like client to client. Like landing a client is what's going to flourish the business. Yeah. That's how you live. That's how you... That's the same. Continue. Sale. That's the right. That's yeah. The thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. How you generate revenue? And it was that exciting. Was I was like, "Oh shit! Oh <laughs> shit! Let's fucking yeah. we'll land fifty-five clients this afternoon." Come How on. do I speak to a group of people right now? I want to make a hundred calls before noon. A hundred <laughs> calls before noon. That's my quota. Some shit like that. Bro. That's fine. <laughs> that dude. I think is that doable? Where are we getting these Maybe. numbers from? <laughs> That's a lot of calls. Someone's doing that right now. Someone's mm-hmm. like, I'm someone's pushing for that shit for real. They probably do. people are doing that. People are grinding out there. Small yeah. percentage of people, but they're fucking grinding out there like that. That's true. We finna enter that <laughs> that that's sacred it's, percentage. It's hard to put yourself in a position to grind like that. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, yeah, maybe it's Wolf of Wall Street. I don't think it, it was a different movie, but it the, in stockbroker exchange places in New York. That's a fucked up sentence. New York Stock Exchange. <laughs> yes. And then you go to the people who are like uh, finance majors, stockbrokers, who are stockbrokers. Uh-huh. You go to that office; it's like a hierarchy there. So, like, you get out of college, and then you're gonna like enter the hierarchy of all of these people that are trying to sell stock for this company. Been doing this for so long, right? Yeah. And then there's like one guy who's like running the whole shit, and then there's like a top salesman. It's like it's a cr- that's a crazy, and you'd have to get yourself through college to get yourself a position in that bottom of that hierarchy and then maybe you know turn into this really rich powerful person i guess Mm -hmm. is the dream they're selling make a whole bunch of money kid it's crazy how you gotta like making money with money just moving money around yeah that's how you're doing yeah (laughs) what so crazy it's cool that's america making money baby come on making (laughs) money with money yeah you know how it goes money is how i make money if you can make money with money then you're like set (sighs) you're good the banks bro they can they can mon- pay interest on the money, borrow the money from the money. Ain't no problem giving you money for interest. If you can take their money for interest and make more money with that money, mm-hmm. everybody's Life's a gamble. Place your bets. Come everybody's on. happy, dog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, what are you gonna do with it? What are you gonna do with it? What are you gonna do with it? You need to have some sort of plan. Some sort of plan. But it's also kind of funny because we all we've mentioned before, but yeah, God or man, man makes plans and God laughs. But you need to have a plan. <laughs> yeah, you need to have something, a loose, structured plan. Get that shit and run with it. Yeah, double it. Feel out what you're supposed to be. Pay doing it back. Man, it's just the opportunity, really. You know, I seen the time, the time, really, the time, the time, and the focus and the attention, uh huh, and the energy, the ability to yeah convert and. Converge all my focus, attention, and energy on something. Yeah. You know where fire we're at? Hmm. Like, run and gun, everything. We're just like, pull up, do it. Pull up, do it. Pull up, do it. <laughs> like, that is our entire life. What do you mean? <laughs> Go to the, the restaurant? Like, the gym. Mm-hmm. Just like, pull up. What am I doing today? What did I do last time? What am I doing right now? A plus workout. Let's hit it. Like, do it. Restaurant, same thing. Table. It's like, what's going on here? Boom, 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 boom. When we need to do music, it's just like, pull up to the studio. What are we doing? This song? Do it. We just be <laughs> knocking it out. Like, everything is just like, we kind of like put this like, what? what's next? What's next? What's next? And we just keep one foot in front of the other, this motherfucker. <laughs> so, I don't know if I should keep it PG, but. Yeah. But then. PG. <laughs> uh, but if you if we were able to like tighten that laser up and be like, like focus and like. I don't know, man. I just, anytime I do that, it's always a successful end result. Yeah, we're spending a good 36, 32, 32 to 36 hours at work, you know what I'm saying? Every week, 30 plus for show. Less than 40, but 30 plus. And it's like, damn, if we could put all that into something else. It's also the formatting. Like, Mm -hmm. to format that with my life, I have to sacrifice all of this other time and energy and routine, Mm -hmm. you know? But with a new, if you were to remove that as a constraint, you could create a new format. Mm-hmm. 
We're just flying off the rails. We're flying <laughs> off the safety. <laughs> there's no there's no handlebars over here, baby. We're unicycling in this bitch. Just, just meditating yeah, on the unicycle. A tricycle to a bicycle to a unicycle. It's like, oh shit, we out here for real. It's a heavy balance and act. But if you do it well, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. What's that thing we could do it? Cause you're betting on your, you're betting on something. You're always betting on something. That's one thing. Yeah, Cause it's like you gotta. It's like my mom, for example. She was, she's in insurance and state, state farm. And but then like her agent or whatever, however the hierarchy works, I'm pretty sure there's like state farm, and then you can make your own branch if you have the certain certifications to be the whatever agent you need to be, whatever levels certs you need to fa- have, have an agency, have people working for you. You get commission off what they bring in, and they get commission off what they bring in. Or whatever. I'm not sure how it works exactly, but whoever's the head of her agency, uh, she's retiring or she's like stepping down. So it's like, oh shit, now I need to go find a new agent. Or you know what I'm saying? It's like, all right, here we go. And I think Jim Jim Carrey has a similar story with his father, talking about he could have been a great comedian. Or Jim Carrey was like, yeah, he's so funny. He was the funniest person I ever knew. But he took a safe route, being an accountant or working at some sort of job like that, and then he just got canned. Or you know what I'm saying? The company went under. Whatever happens, happens. And it's just like, shit, man, there's, there's always risk involved in anything. Yeah, you're betting on something. Safe. Yeah, you're betting on something. Yeah. Always. 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 And it's like, okay, well, what are you resting your beliefs on? You know what I'm saying? The fact that I can pull up a wreck. <laughs> that's, what <it> <laughs> <laughs> that's what you do. Twenty-one. Yeah. And, th- and now we have a good idea and that mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. found uh, we found an instrument. We found, like, a new fishing tool. You imagine if I'm, like, bringing a hook out? I'm like... Watch, bro. It's like, <laughs> bloop. And they're like, whoa. You know what mm-hmm, I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, it would be valuable. Yes. So that's a valuable tool in today's landscape, right. business landscape. Podcasts are lit. So it's cool. So it's yeah. cool. Betting on something. Betting on something. I guess, yeah, it's nice because you got to become the person that's like the, the good bet. You know what I'm saying? I've made some bad bets in my life. Yeah. I know what it's like to. Double down. Yeah. On 13. <laughs> you, get, you get dealt the 10. It's a bad Bang. bet. <laughs> mm-hmm. But this is different. You know what I'm saying? It's a different kind of bet. It's a different kind of uh, wager. Yeah, just like the formatting, the structure, how it... The future, I can see with it, you know? It's like we're always trying to project into the future. And, see, and like the one... When I look into this window of what the future looks like and through this decision path... I was like, oh, okay, that one looks the most clear, or it has like the most clarity, the most color, the most whatever, you know, the most, uh, it seems the most realistic. Or maybe it's like the most, the, the closest that we can actually get to. I'm like, oh, that's, that's what it would look like. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Out of all the potential realities I could enter into through my decision trees, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Through the decisions that are presented to me every moment. Mm. It's like, if I follow, if I'm going that way, if I think I will go that way specifically, it gets clearer and it gets brighter and it gets more resolution and it gets makes more sense and then the steps present themselves I'm like that's the one that's it that's what, that's what we've, we've been doing that for a long time now <laughs> just like through whenever the music started back in the day and even before then subconsciously we were just talking about before we started the pod all that shit back when we were kids yeah we shooting that crazy crumbing video <laughs> we fucking <laughs> we fucking wildness yeah we had a dance video we too. had a crazy dance video we were going crazy just crumping in a hot tub yeah it's out there somewhere I'm sure it'll circulate when we blow up but if you ask me, like, why I Where'd made that, stem that from? Yeah. yeah, I was trying. I was trying. I thought it was funny. I thought I wanted to make content. Mm-hmm. And then once we started making content, I was like, "Wait, hold on, let's try to hit this. Like, do the thing, and then we'll do this thing, and then we'll do that thing." And then <laughs> it was like playing Mario Party, but like with making content. I was like, "It's complicated." But if we do it all, yeah, we took a whole bunch of takes, or like we were trying to get the choreography down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> the timing, the choreography. But that, I thought there was something like worthy there. It was like practice, or it was valuable. Mm-hmm. Like. Why, there was a mark to hit. Why do I hit a Euro step when I walk through a doorway as a kid? It's because like I, I wanted to like always be trying to do the thing I was trying to do like all the time in the now, and it was just like fun. You know what I'm saying? It was like, mm-hmm. how long ago was that? Like ten plus years it had to be, right? Uh, yeah, probably like thirteen. And that was my idea of what YouTube videos were. Yeah. That was the other thing is like I thought that was the art people were throwing on the wall. Twenty ten, you know? <laughs> something in that ballpark. Yeah. Lord knows. Early YouTube videos were just like my he, my <laughs> ho. Like it was, early virality was a low threshold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was talking to the lady about that yesterday. Or because we grew up, 
born in the late or I guess early nineties. So like we saw the whole progression. Like when we were seven and eight, it was like two thousand, two thousand one. It's like we were right into that corner. It's like we saw some shit come out. We saw the, the phone, the internet fully develop, social media come into play. It's like we saw all that come into just like the the matrix, into the meta, into the day to day use of how we interface with this life thing. And enough people do it, it becomes commonplace, or it becomes what is it? You know, I guess in the meta, you know, <laughs> back whenever only a few select people were on Facebook or like the early adopters or innovators. It's like small scale with whatever it is. And then eventually it becomes the meta or whatever, whatever that reference is to, you know, if enough people adopt it or see it or believe it. If it's the truth, mm -hmm. like, yeah, we saw all that shit come into the meta. Yeah. Phones. <laughs> Yeah, social media was a crazy social thing. Social media. Facebook was a crazy thing. I mean, we had a crazy childhood now I'm thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's some crazy shit. We, we were like seven and eight years old. Yeah, it does feel like 13, we, we 14. walked through the... Like our parents were tripping on having a phone mm -hmm. that was like a corded phone. And you would like walk around with like this really long cord. You'd walk around the house with this phone. And then like you'd like... Sacred. Hang it up. That, that was like a whole culture yes. of family households was that shit. Mm-hmm. And, like, really fast, we had, like, just cheap, like, just wireless, like, doo -doo 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 -doo, like, your home line. Mm -hmm. Really quick, and so there's no more really home phones anymore. Mm -mm. It's like, I feel like, yeah, we saw everything, like you said. Yeah. Full spectrum. Weird, weird childhood we had. Yeah. And now these children are going to have that whole landscape, and then and then some. It's like, oh, shit. There's just got to be weird. This is weird, weird. bro. There's just got to be <laughs> wicked. You can live through some shit. So crazy. I'm thinking like someone that was alive in the 50s and then went through the 60s. Like let's say they're 20 years old in the 50s. And then by the 60s, they're 30. And then by the 70s, they're 40. That means they'd be 50 years old at the 80s. So like when they're 55 and it's like 85, they were probably like, yo, <laughs> <laughs> yo. <laughs> Yo, this is cracked. That's some shit. They made it that far. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about a fifty-five-year-old, right? I hope I'm. Jo mm. I hope I'm Joe Rogan jacked at fifty-five, oh, yeah, bro, like yeah, a gorilla. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who let that gorilla out of the zoo? What the hell? He got out again. Saw forearms walking around. No, but yes, times were different. Different yeah. times. Just that to say, I guess that per the perspective of man, I saw so much curvature. I'm like, I wonder if everybody that lives through three decades has been like, this shit's nuts out here. Like, <laughs> this shit just evolves and evolves. But specifically with us, the the internet, mm -hmm. the internet really was a that that started like when we were kids. You know what I'm saying? We saw that YouTube come into fruition, or like from nothing. It was yeah. cat videos and shit. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's that's pretty bonkers. Yeah, right. And how, how big YouTube's is the internet keep paying people? They are. How much is YouTube paying to people? I'm sure a lot. Many, many YouTubers out there getting paid. It's like, what's a lot? And the top 1%ers mm -hmm. make a lot more than the top 10% probably. Yeah, I think that's how a lot of it works. But what's a lot? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you have a TikTok account that gets $10,000 a month, like, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's, that's income. That's fact. It's a fat income. Yeah. <laughs> You're chilling on that. Just people who have six like six figures. Just fucking spooky story TikTok pages mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that are or like conspiracy shit or whatever. Yeah. Whatever niche yeah. faceless videos they're making. I like just how the Instagram ads make it seem. <laughs> <laughs> have you been on my algorithm? algorithm right? <laughs> Y'all seen that shit on the algorithm? People are like, man, shit's so easy. I wake up, I make videos. Ten thousand dollars. Come on. I met a guy. Are you stupid? I met a guy that said he Pain tried me. that. <laughs> He looked sad. It looked like it didn't work for him. Wait, what happened? You said you saw someone who it didn't work for? No, I was um, introduced to a person who was telling me about how they were an entrepreneur, more or less. He was like a 20-year-old dude. IRL? Maybe 30-year-old. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 it was at work. And uh, he said that he was like, you seen those TikTok videos? Were you like, you know? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, I tried to do that, but like, you know. They don't really work out. Really? Yeah. And then, of course, you got to be like, Why well, not? was he trying hard? Did he do his best? Did he go about it in a smart way? How much did you get? Yeah. How much did you put into it? Yeah. All those questions, right? Of course. 
But the guy looked Reasonable. like he looked really sad about it, and I was like Aww. discouraged. I was, <laughs> you didn't investigate further. Nah, yeah, nah. It's like, <laughs> it's like okay, heard. Nah, man, that shit didn't really work out. Oh, I was like, oh, okay. I, <laughs> I wonder why. In my own brain, I was like, I saw, I'm still, I'm still gonna try. Then work out for you, dog. <laughs> <laughs> you discouraged me one bit. Uh, were you using the hashtag? Like, shit, like, boy, you, were, you, you fucked up somewhere. I got this. But I understand, like, the internet's a crazy thing. Like, trying to make money off of the internet's a crazy thing. Mm -hmm. How much money is in the internet? So much. So much. People make it seem, I don't know, but they're also trying to sell you some shit, too. Everyone's trying to sell you some shit. Trying to need, need, want your attention, need your attention. Want you to click on something. Some shit. Mmm. Ulterior motives, trying to get money. I don't think Joe Rogan's isn't necessarily doing that though, or like people like that. He he broke through to the top one percent, right? Once you get there, you really like Jay Cole. He don't give a fuck. Exactly. Kendrick don't give a fuck. He don't exactly. give a fuck what you guys say on social media. None. They really doesn't give. A they're fuck. really living life. Some people are just like content is crucial. <laughs> just like people is like ah, oh. like the Russells. Once right you on get that there, line. once you get there though, I guess right because yeah, you can't just not. Once you enter the meta, once you get in that motherfucker, then you're in. Like the the meta being the yeah, like the day to day culture, the day to day of what people are talking about, the consensus of general population. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, well, what do people even talk about? Is it what people talk about that's? I think just being. What's the what's the what what meta are we talking about the the culture, the meta of culture, mm -hmm. yeah, so like what do we talk about here in San Antonio as a culture? Yeah, right. The Spurs. Yeah, right. That's what comes <laughs> to mind right away. The Spurs. Spurs is the first thing I think about. I guess it depends on what you're what you're into. Yeah, you know the same way that whenever you go into a store, the store presents itself in accordance with what you're setting out upon it, in search of. You know what I'm saying? That's what life is, I think. So, like, no matter what city you go to, you'll you'll find the thing that you're interested in. So, if we asked a hundred different people in San Antonio, that would give us some different answers. But yeah. I think out of the consensus, Spurs is one of them for sure. Yeah. If, see, we can go by statistics. Like, mm -hmm. um, if we're talking about different cities, or I guess like I was thinking about like musicians, popular musicians from that place, or popular like the Riverwalk or popular tourism things. Yeah. Or they say it's a it's Pop a culture, music, movies, big little town sports a little big town yeah that's like a cultural thing you know what i'm saying that's everybody like, knows everybody in san antonio it's a th weird thing that's the meta <laughs> of san antonio right yeah 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 Yeah, that's the there's things like that that like what are the people at the watering hole what are the people that people what are they always saying there so a lot of people be saying the same stuff you know what i'm saying yeah and i'll be picking up like okay this is something y'all think here you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying i know a lot of the old heads in san antonio mentioned that like out near like 1604, like north side of 281, and like just in that area, I guess, or just in, in the area, a lot of areas in general in San Antonio. Like, oh yeah, man, like 30, 40 years ago, this was just pasture. <laughs> this is pasture. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Then I let go of that. This like, is just this is just green like, light. There's nothing here. Look at all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. It's crazy. I, I find myself saying that though when I go back home too, you know? Like I yeah. to my high school town. I'm just like, man, look at all this shit. Yeah. <laughs> So maybe that's it, not... it really blew up over that 183 north side over there. It's mm -hmm, crazy, bro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, Cedar Park, Texas, North Austin. Texas in general is crazy. It's just booming. Popping. It's just growing. San Marcus is popping. I remember I saw it when it was like me, like mid pre early pop to like nowadays pop. I saw like that whole thing happen back when I was in high school still. I was like, oh shit, this place is popping. This place is booming. Dude, the university is a great business. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk about some business. That's a they on some. They standing on business. They really standing on business. You can't even fucking take bankruptcy on their loans, bro. They standing on the most business. That's some shit. Now we coming for that money. Oh, you gonna pay us? <laughs> you, you gonna pay us? I'm real like, good for what? For, for for why? Staying in a dorm for a year? <laughs> like the dorm kind of sucked. <laughs> but in your case, there was a hundred other kids in that dorm. It's like so many. The business model is crazy. So many people paying so much money, and they charge whatever they want. And they, and they always, uh, when I was there, there was at least a full 
I don't know. I could be mistaken, dude. But I, in my opinion, or in my memory, there's there was a four year run where they had the largest population of students that they'd ever had, like year after year after year. And they were like, yeah, it's just like every year we take more people. The largest incoming class. <laughs> yeah, we've ever had. Wow. And they new, go crazy. New student orientation. Yeah. Every NSO from that point, whenever we started to whenever we finished, it was just new or more, more, more every time. They're making money, brother. Yeah, so even if you like money. bump up the tuition like a little bit, you're already like breaking your record every year. Like you could take a down year. You could just keep bumping it up a thousand dollars a year until you take a decline year and then be like, Oh, that's our line, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't I don't think they do that because I remember one of the reasons I went to Texas State is because it was more affordable than UT or A and M, but yeah, you want to talk about a business. Business. We talking business? <laughs> They're making crazy money, brother. Crazy, bro. Crazy money. They do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah, dude. bro. It's a crazy place. It's a crazy place. And like the, I don't even want to talk too much about it because I don't want to get canceled out here. And I canceled, but I don't want YouTube to take this episode down. RIP forty eight episode, episode forty eight. RIP. Catch that I one remember. On, catch that one on Spotify. But because yeah, just hearing Jordan Peterson talk about it, but it just makes sense that the it's like pharmaceutical companies or wherever the money's at fucking quoting the, uh, the wire right now and he's like if you follow the drugs you're gonna find drug dealers and drug users if you follow the money you know tell them who you're gonna find yeah it's like ooh, whoever wrote that bars you know, <laughs> just truth what did you see that you saw that recently no oh fucking in college <laughs> you remember that shit? yeah <laughs> damn <laughs> I watched that shit like a year ago, and I remember that. That's fire. If bars hit me, they hit me, dog, and they stick to me. Yeah, that's gas. That's gas. Now, that show's great because it's like, there's times like that mm-hmm. where you're like, fuck. It's like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? That's why Game of Thrones is like that. This is some crazy shit, bro. It's like, just, yeah. Good writing is good writing, bro. That's what fucking rules our culture. It's like good art, you know? Whenever fucking Michelangelo was around doing his crazy shit, Da Vinci, whoever the hell else. It's like, man, just make something that'll stop you in your tracks, make you cry. It's like, what? How do you have that power? What is that? Where's that come from? Oh, like, I, I couldn't tell you exactly, but it exists. It's like good art rules our culture. The closest expression of the it's, truth. It's a, some of our most valuable things on this earth. We love it. People love Game of Thrones. Our, our pieces people of love art. art. Yeah, people love movies, shows, books. Love it. Music. We couldn't do the rest we of it without it. it. It's a lifeline. Food. You know, you know we fucking love it. It's like it's like that. <laughs> food is like that, and that is like food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the artistry, like they share that connection with artistry. Just like we really need food, but I think we really need the artistry as well. Yeah. How much of our you talked about we outsource our crazy sanity? We outsource our yeah. sanity. Mm-hmm. How much sanity do we outsource to art? Like a lot, bro. Mm-hmm. I like what do you mean? Like the music you listen to, or the movies that you watch, just kind of like validating like that life even looks the way you think it looks. Like when you see someone going to work mm-hmm. and wearing a suit because he's got to clock in, it's just like when you see pe- other people have conversations, and like you see someone laugh or you see someone like get caught in a lie or like whatever nuances of like personal connection you see, it's like that's like validating that you like your life is like fucking something that's actually going on here that you're not like a crazy person dropped into reality you're saying. Yeah, all my yeah, memories yeah. are you know what i'm saying and i think when you listen to like <clears throat> kanye west or anybody talk their shit or be upset about something or going through something that's like you outsource some of that like oh yeah they could, i'm going through that thing too mm-hmm. i can relate yeah yeah the, the ability to relate to others is what makes us like it helps us uh, accept the hallucination almost you know what i'm saying yeah kind of because i think that's what i was feeling whenever we went to a mega multivitamin trip years ago i remember that feeling of like wait are y'all real like i remember that that coming to the forefront of my consciousness i guess twice i, I could remember two instances in those realms <laughs> <laughs> which is the the thought and the feeling of like no one else is real mm. then no one else exists you know what I'm saying? I'm like, wait, you, you like you're, you're real, right? Like, yes. are these people real? Like, you're not all figments of my imagination. I can't be sure about them. I'm not 100 percent sure. I know that I'm. I I am in this motherfucker. <laughs> I'm in here. Yeah. I'm experiencing experience like for sure. Yeah. And I look day. over. I'm just like, wait, but like you're not. 
like you're going through this thing also, or like through your own thing. I was like, yes, but on a completely different planet from me. Like I'm sitting on this planet. Like I'm in this planet. Like <laughs> I am the Earth, or whatever the fuck you want to call it. I am this whatever. And I was like, you're you're also a whatever. Like you're also doing that. Because in my world, like there's nothing else. Like everything outside of this, my perception outside of my mind, whatever the hell that is, your imaginative imaginative space, wherever you dream or wherever you daydream whenever you conjure up a mental image in your mind it's like where's that you think of a beach it's like, okay where is that beach what the fuck it's like it's in your mind's eye it could be an actual beach but like it's in your head you know yeah whatever that place is like we all have that and like we're just connected to it or we're all experiencing our own thing i know i'm having mine for sure <laughs> for sure but like i guess we use the other people to be like you're also doing this and this is all like a real thing that we're doing going through together it's like okay okay I could like accept that. It makes it easier to just like go along with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the we need that almost. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. not. Otherwise all the it'd be time. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be too hard to operate day to day. Yeah. I if you're think... losing yourself, you're just like, Am I real? Yeah. You couldn't fucking drive to work. You couldn't like 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 be with your spouse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's talk to your like... mother. It's like, yes, I birthed you. Like I'm real. You're real. I made you. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> How sure are you of that? <laughs> you sound like a crazy person. They're going to lock you up for that kind of shit, dog. We're all crazy. I was just saying, it sounds like Alzheimer's almost. <laughs> yeah. And I think that, like, you would think maybe you wouldn't need that. But mm -hmm. I think if all of it were gone, it would be kind of crippling. Like, how much we would be like, is this... Is what I think is going on here? What's going on? Is everybody working a job? Am I getting taken advantage of here? Like, you guys have like husbands and shit, right? Like, you're making compromises <laughs> with people in your relationships. Like, you you need to fucking, you know what I'm saying? What's going? On? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on here? How should we act? How should we operate? Yeah, we need that. We need other people for that, for sure. Definitely. To help validate your sanity and help validate, like, in, like trying to consolidate what's going on here to a manageable chunk. It's like, yeah. It's very so many, interesting. It's stuff. so deep. <laughs> interesting stuff. That's what I'm saying. It was when you were talking about, like, I am this planet. I am this existence. Like, this, uh, this experience that's being played out is like a single RPG straight into my life. Like, I can't, I can't distinguish this world revolving around me from not revolving around me unless you do exist, which is pertinent information to me. Like I need to know <laughs> that like you're also having experience too. So that way I can like properly organize myself as a participant in this thing. Yeah. 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 You would need to have that. Otherwise it would get real weird, real fast. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't even know how weird it would get. Yeah. Outside of your fucking conceptualization or understanding our ability to understand. Yeah. You hit that bitch. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Those are some words. <laughs> you brought up an interesting fucking yeah. thought. Cuz cuz that's like uh the fear of I think it's some of your fingers from when you're lighting that candle. Oh yeah, I couldn't figure it out. It's okay. It's that's no, Gucci. That's cool. It doesn't smell good nor bad. No, I think it's just burn. <laughs> it's just when you light a can like a lighter upside down and the flame like goes up. Yeah. And you're like son of a bitch. Yeah, <laughs> that's why you yeah. need them long neck. Yeah, for the sure. Long neck lighter. I was hoping I had a torch from work, but I've been out of butane for like two weeks. At what point is it my responsibility to go onto Amazon to buy myself butane? I'd say probably right now. <laughs> but <laughs> that was the that was the question I had asked myself the other day. And that's how shit gets done. That's how Fun. those that's the kind of gears that turn that turned our country. Okay. <laughs> yes. Turned our country for a decade. Millennia. A millennia. A millennia. Century is the word I was going for. <laughs> Yes. But yeah, at some point it was funny. I was just like, I need this thing and it keeps not being here. I guess I just got to get it myself. And I was just like, what a miraculous turnaround. What a miraculous. How much of that is just like birthed our country, you know? Mm -hmm. Just got to do the thing. Let me do the, the thing that presents itself to me right now. Do that thing. Mm -hmm. That's all you can do. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> do the things as they, as they present themselves. Don't That's worry funny. about the things that haven't presented themselves yet. Try it. We kind of have to. That's the plan. But also need to be loose with the plane. So it's like, ah, yes and no. Paradox. Paradox. Pain Manning. What were we talking about before that? Yeah, I don't want to get too far. Okay. Because yeah, we're, yeah. we're hitting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're hitting that shit. You were talking about your experience. I thought it was also interesting that... Um, we need others. 
you had to ask your <laughs> you see, you said it like it was just a off bit off but i think he really meant you like actually asked your mom yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i was in the hospital <laughs> just like you're real, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Still coming down. Or back to this. Back to accepting whatever the hell hallucinations playing out in front of us. Whatever we call life. Day-to-day life. Like, I was coming down to that. And I was still in, like, the my own universe. I'm just like, okay. But well, you're here, right? You exist. I know you. You're real. These people, I'm, I know you're real. Like, for sure. And you know that and I'm real. And what was it about your mom that was just, like, such a sure thing, whereas other people might have been... I guess I knew her, you know what I'm saying? You could feel her? And I was able, yeah. Or like, I knew I knew, I knew, knew who she was, at least in my story. And then in my story, I was able to remember that that would, like, make sense. It's like, okay, yes. Like, she's, if anyone could, like, validate that I'm, a, like, a real person and that they're a real person, it's like, it would, it would be this person who, like, brought me into the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. You have the proof. Like, yeah, you, you definitely, like, I didn't just plop into this body, even though it kind of feels like I did sometimes. <laughs> or, like, yeah. plop into this existence. Yeah. I didn't just, like, jump into here. I was like, no, like, it was, like, maybe it's not as miraculous, or maybe it's just more simple than that. It's like, you're able to simplify that. It's like, no, you just, like, birthed me. Okay. That, that explains how I got into the game. But I'm like, I think it's deeper than that <laughs> in, the, in the prelude to the game. Yeah. I think there was something that was going on before this that we jump into percent potentially or decide to get into or whatever we're called or uh, it's our turn. or Maybe it's a really, really long ride. I don't know. Ride. Yeah, I mean, we're waiting Line. for it a long time. Yeah. And then I was like, yes, we get to ex- enter experience. Or whatever, just plop into this reality. Sure. Here I am. It's crazy. Human. <laughs> Out of all the things it could have been. All, all the things we could have been, we're just humans. Bonkers. These specific humans. These exact people right here. It's like, what? It's a lot. So yeah, it was, you need the other people to help validate, like, <laughs> I'm not crazy here. Because we're all a little bit crazy. I think there was another... Uh, uh, it, was, it was a Game of Thrones character. I'm trying to remember exactly what the situation was. But they were talking about crazy people, quote unquote. And it's like, a crazy person... Or maybe it was on Instagram. A crazy person isn't really necessarily, it's not that they, what they see, it's not that what they're saying they're seeing isn't there, it's just that no one else can see it, you know? So it's not necessarily that they're crazy, they're just in a minority of perception, you know what I'm yes. saying? Yeah. Every, uh... We're all crazy. What's before an We're early adopter? We're all fucking crazy. Huh? What's before an early adopter? Like, innovator? Yeah, I guess, like, an innovator would, under those guidelines, always be considered crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Every time. Every time. Mr. Beast... Elon, Jeff, all of them, and first comedians. But I think also, like you said, we're all crazy because we all like have a particular perception point, and because that particular perception point would point us in the direction of new, that would make us all crazy because we're not mm-hmm, a mm-hmm. generalized. No one's like just a generalized. I feel like going to col- college and bot majoring in general studies. It's like you're not gonna like specify. You're not specified to anything. Like you don't have any interests. But I think naturally we all have real life interests that put us in a niche, you know? Yeah, that's crazy because like going into college, I was like general studies, you know what I'm saying? I was just like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Like I'm going to go to the College of Science and Engineering or whatever, see what the fuck they have to offer. Yeah. And I just went with uh, my roommate. He, he went to, because we were in the same boat. It's like, what the fuck are we doing here? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm not even sure why he should, ended up going that way. Maybe because some of our friends were. Had you, had you thought about <laughs> what you wanted to do with your life up to that point? Not really. Not like fully. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I'm not like at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying Just to like... a loose abstraction at best. Yeah, yeah, What do yeah. you expect out of a 17, 18 year old? You know what I'm saying? Like, we're, they're just kids. We're all just kids growing up. Did you ever see no like, a, like a doctor on TV and think like, I want to be that guy? No. I don't think I'm trying to remember because I, I, w- I didn't really want to be like an athlete either. Like, you know, I, I love playing sports, but I didn't, I didn't like I projected going into the NBA. And I was like, I don't think I want to like go that or like that's not like a, it's not calling to me. You know what I'm saying? I never really had anything that was calling to me. Just an abstract idea of just like I want to be successful. And what does that look like? How do you do that? And then I guess that was kind of coupled with the idea of like, well, you need to set yourself up to have a good job and to have like something consistent to fight the consistent it's fucking life that's gonna come like comes at you like, expenses and all that shit so you need something you need something safe i guess was like kind of like the thought and then college was like that route that presented itself as like a 
the pathway to that type of life, that type of reality where you're safe or like you feel okay, yeah, financially stable. It's like a to get a good job, you go to college. It's like you know that's how, that, that's how it's been painted for the last whoever knows how long oh, yeah. until recently. You know what I'm saying? In the last like eight years, I would say that the narrative has been like <sighs> it's kind of switched big time versus like twenty years ago. There's a couple of things going on there. Okay. Definitely, yes, you don't necessarily need a degree to be, like... To have that successful life Don't need that it. I wanted in high school. Yeah, my mom was definitely like, you are going to college <laughs> because I'm <laughs> motherfucker. Motherfucker. <laughs> like, no questions asked because I'm a good mom. So I'm, I'm a good mom, so I'm sending my kid to college. And like that... I'm making my kid do the hard thing. That's worth doing. Right. And I think that culture felt that way for like a super long time. Long time. But it definitely seems like you can... I don't know. Are people talking like that? Yeah. What, what's the alternative route? What are they saying you do this instead? You don't go to college. You just got to... Yeah, I guess there's options for like uh, trade schools or... I'm trying to remember what this one guy... I saw on his uh, social media talking about it. I think he said, yeah, so most of the people who get degrees don't even like use what that... Or get a job in the field of what the degree is in. Like 80% or something right. like that. Like some crazy statistic. And then he's like, and most people who end up getting a job that they keep for long term <clears throat> they end up or uh i guess it's like yeah it's not related in the field and they get like on the job training or like they, they get a different certification that's like for that job specifically right so it's like it's not even really being used for like 100 like as as intended you know or as like it should be intended because no one knows what the fuck they want to do when they're that young you know it's a crazy thing to ask somebody to pick crazy. <laughs> you haven't experienced enough life to know Really, what you want to do? All, all, yeah, all I had at that time was a like general conceptualization of like an abstract idea. I want to be a successful person, like yeah. as, as specific as specific as I could get it, and then even more specific as I got through college. I was like, okay, I want to like own my own business one day. I want to be in like the one who's in charge. Like I want to be the one who's because like working for me or working for me was kind of like a I don't know. It's another another kind of idea that's been spread throughout culture. Like entrepreneurship is probably at all time high. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Doing drop shipping, doing whatever the fuck you want to do. Definitely seems that way on Instagram. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Instagram's got me. <laughs> me too. Algorithm. I think we share it. <clears throat> uh-huh. No, I'm with you. That's what Instagram does too, because it shows us, or like, if you like something, then it'll show it on my feed. And if I like something, it'll show it on your feed. That's crazy. Because we're friends. Instagram's crazy. Mm-hmm. Or we're, we engage with each other's profiles. Algorithm. These companies are nuts. But I do agree that... Attention whores. I think COVID also launched a lot of people into trying to make their own money through the internet because they just had time in the internet. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, I saw somebody on Shark Tank and it was this lady and she said she started a drop shipping company where she was selling sweaters and she had like a crew neck and a hoodie and the crew neck was like 45 and the hoodie was like 52. And she had made seven hundred thousand dollars a day. What? That's why everybody, all the sharks were like, "What? What are you here for? Like, you yeah. see one more money? You want to expand?" And then she was like, "Oh, I made seven hundred thousand dollars a day this fiscal this fiscal year, but my total sales are like a one point two million or something like that." And they were like, "Okay, so you started a clothing company, they drop ship it, you do it all by yourself, and you've generated over a million dollars total revenue. Like, you're fucking cracked, lady. You're cracked." Like that's people can do it. Like what? And, okay, but is is that what? what is Shark Tank trying to get me to believe that? Maybe because it just seemed too. I was just really like, engineered propaganda, right? Uh huh. Who Ooh. knows how deep the puppet strings get? <sighs> what if? What do they want? That's the other thing. It's like, what do you want from me? <laughs> for what? Like for what? Yeah, you're trying to sell me the American dream <clears throat> in hopes that I fail, more or less. Because that's the only reason it's like a bet, unless you're just like happy. I think they want people in debt, probably. Yeah, I guess like they want people spending money. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Maybe not. Maybe that's like the most common route. It's just like the debt. But I guess people. I guess uh, what is like a healthy market where the the energy's flowing, the the transactions are flowing. People are borrowing and lending and paying back and offering services and paying for services and innovating goods and whatever. I guess right. Yeah, and we'll be spending money for sure. So, profitability—that's the—that's—that's that's the fucking the center stone of a business. 
So if you can take what you have and turn a profit out of it, right? Mm-hmm. It's how you live. It's how you progress. It's how you survive. The lifeblood of a business. Like your reviews. <laughs> the ability to bring more people in to do more business. Mm-hmm. The reviews are marketing. The reviews are validation. You know what I'm saying? Dude. Dude. Accreditation, validation. We need social. We need. We need the people to tell us what's real and what's not, and what's what the fuck's going on here. Yeah, we do. You know what I'm saying? That's why reviews are important. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if there was no reviews about anything ever. There was a time like that, like fucking people, forty years ago. People talk. Everybody knew. Yeah. We need people. This is because I don't know. This is a crazy thing we're going through here. <laughs> yeah. Crazy experience. But it's also individualized. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, it's that paradox. It's a whole bunch of paradoxes in this motherfucker. It's like you are the individual singularity. But like, we are so interconnected. We, and we're all experiencing this individual singularity together. And we're all connected in, in that. I think whatever is generating my individual singularity is also generating your individual singularity. You know what I'm saying? It's all gener- yeah. coming from the same source. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I see, I see that as like a, like a diamond reflecting light from a source. Yeah. And we're all this different like angle of the light coming off the source. Yeah, exactly right. But mm-hmm. it's from the same light. Mm-hmm. So yeah, bro. Fucking reviews. Lifeblood of a business. Profit. Because what do they you want? You need to make money. <laughs> if they want, I guess if they want the economy flowing, then... That's great. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, what were we talking about? The, the government, Shark Tank. There we go. <laughs> yeah. How deep's the propaganda get? Who knows? <sighs> Scary thoughts. It could be, oof, yeah. yeah. Who's controlling? What were we talking about before that? We're talking about. I think probably what that is, is they're trying to, they're, that show is trying to sell us in that moment. They're pitching that, that the demographic for that show that's hidden right there is like the people like us that want to make money independently that want to start a drop shipping brand i just don't think a lot of people are making seven hundred thousand dollars she said she did it by doing like uh yeah what was special what was proprietary about her process or her designs she, she they were really high quality really nice and did she, she designed them herself i don't know i don't think she answered that question hmm. maybe she did though but yeah also she dropped them like in drops so she dropped like had like three sales a year, and then they would sell out every time. Then she's like reload for the next drop, drop it, and then sell out. And she's like had X amount of successful drops. How did she get these people to even look at her drops? It's a great question, brother. Shark Tank is too. How fast. do y'all do that? Like, okay, lady, I believe it. Fuck the, it, digital Let's go. marketing. Just bet on you. That's what she did. Yeah, <laughs> it fucking worked. Yeah. She probably lady putting in work. Come on, you know. So in, uh, independent entrepreneurship, I think, is at an all time high. Yes, is it safe to say that? <clears throat> yes, I think so. I think so too. I think so. If it's not, that's what we want it to be. Small businesses are the lifeblood of the American economy, right? I mean, what the fuck? You want Walmart and what else is out Amazon. there? Amazon, Amazon, just to be running everything, just to give you here's your scissors, and it's just one scissor. <laughs> that's your whole life here's your vitamin it's just like there's only that that's like not how capitalism is supposed to work it's not it's supposed to be competing products and competing markets creating a consumer friendly environment because they're always trying to give you a better deal and give you a better product for less money because they have to outperform their competition but mm-hmm. instead we have these like gigalith companies that dominate the marketplace and then if we go through a recession like during covid we're like a lot of a lot of restaurants closed. Oh, how many, bro? Oh, baby, I think we talked about this before. <laughs> it was like it was like seventy percent or some shit. I don't know. Maybe that we were just estimating. <laughs> maybe we were just guessing. It might have been a speculation. I'm not segment. sure if we got validation on an actual number, a figure, but yeah, I'm sure upwards of like seventy percent, bro. Bro, who knows? How bro, many. just gone. Anyone who wasn't part of like a mega corporation, except for I guess we we know one that fucking survived. You know what I'm saying? At a crazy point, like that wasn't a part of a corporate structure. Right. A larger corporate structure or has other businesses to help supplement. It's like, but, but most of, mo- over half for sure. Over half dead. Completely done. Any mom, pa, any of that bullshit done. It's like, what oh, are they supposed to do? That's rough. That's fucked up, brother. 
hopefully there's been funds or hopefully someone, maybe there's been some stuff that started for the service. And I think there maybe have, has been something that started for the service industry specifically after that time, shortly after the relief, some kind yeah, of, yeah, some sort of foundation or organization, something that signed a lot of money towards it, but I don't know how much of it all went there. Who knows how that all played you out. You can tell us in a Joe Rogan. <laughs> crazy, crazy thing, thing that happened there though in our, in our life. Yeah, I think with a business like that, it's tough to try to be a small business that stays alive forever. Like, maybe small businesses don't stay alive forever. And maybe, like, small businesses need to grow into large businesses, you know? Hmm. That's what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's kind of true. I guess, oh, I don't know, unless you get to a, or ideally, like Joe Rogan, for example, is just trying to get to a point where like you're just breaking even. But I guess he has other supplemental income. But if that's like your sole income on that business, you can't just be breaking even all the time. Yeah, can't. You can't. You can't. And inflation's happening. You can't eat on it. Competition's coming in. Other small businesses, businesses are forming to provide your service at a lower price in an, in an enhanced way. That's the name of the game. So you gotta, I think you gotta get yoked. <laughs> you gotta get business and financially yoked up. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's one philosophy. That's one theory. And I also think idea. if it's a small business, you gotta be flexible and liquidatable. And like, if you turn a profit for three or four years, and you can like keep your brand and your business alive, no matter what happens to like the physical constraint of the current ecosystem. Like, if we all go through recession, we still need to be able to find a way for our company to be successful for the new idea, for the new thought, for the new service that we provide, for the new product. Like if we have to adapt to the marketplace, we need to be able to be like adaptable, you know? But if you're a freaking mom and pop Italian restaurant that's been open for 20 years, it's not a lot of adaptability there. Mm. You can't turn that company into something else, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you can't really pivot too, too hard. Yeah, you can try drop shipping spaghetti calzones <laughs> <laughs> to go calzones <laughs> yeah so i think that's one one way when we designed our businesses we're super flexible because this idea has been flexible our whole life we do a band we we'll make youtube content what, what, what are we doing here what are we doing we're making music we're making gas music okay that's tight music's coming out y'all yeah the music's dropping by the time this is out it will already have been out for a couple days now so enjoy that shit that shit's banging yeah i hope you like more it. music coming Bump out that. passion that's the spirit that draws us forward, creates this shit, keeps this shit going. Yeah. Yeah. It's just coming out, y'all. So hopefully y'all enjoy more music coming in. We're just fucking keep on going. Keep on moving. Hit the target. <laughs> Hit that target, too. We're going this way now. Hit that target. Just keep on. Keep on going, baby. All right there, y'all. Oh, right there. Right there. We're right fucking there, boy. We're right there. <laughs> we're right there. We're right fucking there, dog. It's going down, y'all. Right there. It's going down. It's going fucking down. Yeah, bro. I love that we named it passion because it's like that's such a or it's like the, the transition from death to self to alive to passion. As far as like a three track, three track, three track. And then we had we sprinkled in Miss You as a single. Maybe we might sprinkle in uh whatever, Red Hot as a single. By the way, the three packs are a cool progression. One, two, three. It's like death to self alive and then passion. And it's just like the idea, like kind of like a, the transition that we kind of made or like a, that people make or like the, when fucking like in books, like spoiler alert, whenever Harry Potter dies, it's like he dies and he comes back. And then like people, like that's a very common motif in a lot of stories. And then that is like the death to self to the alive and like the death to self being like the death to your Whatever you think is going on here, whatever you're holding on to is like, this is what's happening. This is what's happening. This is what's happening. It's like, you're probably wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry <laughs> to tell you. You're probably fucking wrong. Yeah. So then you have to like let go of that. And it's very scary because then what is there? And if, like, what are you going to say? If you're right, it'll come <laughs> back. Mm -hmm. Whatever the truth is what's left there. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so if your perception. Objective truth. Objective right? reality. So hopefully letting go is like, um hopefully it feels good because then you're like holding what you thought you were holding and mm -hmm. that would be awesome but if you're not you can just attune yourself to that mm -hmm. you know yeah i can let that go die into that egoic that, that 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 part of yourself or whatever and there's many other interpretation we can, we can go on for days about this shit yeah but just like the idea of that in a loose sense and then yeah and then what comes next will be like the rebirth or the 
rebirth into new life or into a different perspective, a different understanding, a new understanding, enhanced understanding, more experience, more fine-tuned, more refined, more definition, more añejo, finer wine, you know what I'm saying, All, more development. You come back with that. And a new perspective and then you operate with that and then you make new decisions and do all that shit and then i think those decisions and the thing that should come after that if you're able to let go of like what i think is happening here it's like okay i need to go to college i need to get a good job i need to get that good job i need to work there i need to whatever that was my that was my particular specific egoic what's happening here how do you how do we exist here what's going on what's worth doing you know what i'm saying how do i how should i live my life well you want to have a success, successful life okay that makes sense you want to have, be like financially stable, have like a family, all that, all that good shit. The American dream, fucking pop beer on 4th of July, all that fun stuff. Popping bottles on New Year's Eve. That was my projection going forward of just like, I want to have that, that type of life. And then, but I didn't, I had my own, I developed my own pathways of how to get there through my own means and my own definitions of what I think is happening. And that was go to college and then you get a girlfriend and then you do this and you graduate college and then you get an internship and then you get a job and then you climb the ranks in that hierarchy and, and whatever the fuck. And all of that was what I thought was happening here and was what was worth doing or how, what was worth devoting your life to in a broader sense, but in a day-to-day, -day, what it looked like day-to-day. -day. And then to be able to let go of that and say, fuck that, what's worth pursuing here? What's worth doing day-to-day? -day? What's, what's worth living your life look like? What is it? I guess ultimately you want to feel something. You want to be more... It's not that I wasn't fulfilled at that job or in that life, in that relationship or whatever. It was just a different, it wasn't, I think there, because I think we're called here for something. I think we're, there's a, this is tailor-made, your individual, individuality and singularity is tailor-made for you and you alone. And like you specifically, like intimately, more than you even know yourself, it was made for you. You know what I'm saying? You'll stumble upon things in your life. You're like, oh my God, this is crazy. I love this thing or whatever. This is hidden, this is hidden different. But so the ability to let go of what I thought was happening here and then to pursue a different, unknown, completely unfamiliar territory of doing music from transitioning from a fucking nine to five Monday through Friday job in like a corporate office eventually or like in more of a lab, but then transitioning eventually, ideally on my career path from uh, the person who hired me and like what they had saw for me going forward in the company was I was going to do that for a little bit and then progress into the fucking cubicle, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? The office, the office. Right. And I was like right on that cusp. I was like about to transition into that within the next like six months probably or whatever. And there was a job opportunity within that to help me get or to like further put me in that. There was a job. Op I'm, this is like just just coming back to me right now. But like there's a I remember there was an opportunity that came up within that company that would have allowed me to apply for that job and then to potentially get it and then go to the corporate office. Just like boom, boom, boom. And then it presented itself. And I was just like, that's that was like a. You feel it. It's a feeling process here we're living. You know what I'm saying? And like choosing, hitting A on that option in the game was like further doubling down or continuing on the path of my own perception of what I think is going on here and what I should do, how I should act. And then to, I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Truly. I truly don't want to do that. Like, you know, you fucking know if you listen to yourself and like just like be open and honest with your heart and your mind and your thoughts and your imaginative, imaginative space, Ooh. your mental space. Ooh. If you're opening that to the fullest, you you know you feel what's right and what's what you how you should operate, how you should move, Hell how you yeah. should act, what's the next action here, what's the right thing to do as it presents itself. And in that moment I just knew like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. Like I just my soul, like that seems like to be the next logical progression here. And then in like the fucking movie of Justin does this stuff and works at this company and progresses through the hierarchy. That's how that story goes. But then I was like, nah, that's not the story I want to live. Like that's not what I want to have happen here. So then I had to like be able to let go of that and then to find something else that was that thing that felt at least a little bit more like that was like when we made music and when we were hanging out together and when we were talking about being fucking doing our own business and making our own media. And when this stems from when we were kids making our own that video, that YouTube video like 14 years ago, he was saying crazy grumping dog. <laughs> choreographed fucking scenes a whole yeah. choreographed like minute and a half skit in a, in a hot tub yeah. and in the middle of the night it's like december like <laughs> yeah my 12 year old sister's recording it yeah like come on now like where the hell did that come from so that's the, that and then so not doing that job progressing down that rabbit hole led me to okay well, well if i'm not progressing down that rabbit hole what the fuck am i gonna do here day to day and that being in the way back of our subconscious and it's everything playing out us like freestyle rapping in college ever since like late high school early college all that time all of that led to the like i want to do that like i love the way i feel when that happens 
or like when I am doing that and I'm doing it correctly, it's the best feeling like you could have. You know what I'm saying? When you're fucking just crushing it. And now like that, I, I see that's transition into other things in our life. But back then it looked like I want to continue the feeling of whatever produces the feeling I have whenever I'm freestyling. And then I'm like, just because you could feel when you're freestyling, you're able to just like, you're at first you're just trying to rhyme words together. Red, head, dead, cat hat and then once you like get past that you're able to like set yourself up and create nuances and like hit different syllables and the, the each beat is a different offering of a potential way to dance every different tempo every different drum pattern organization all that is different opportunity to dance in a different way on the beat verbally so then like whenever you're hitting that in the fucking real time with no preparation and it sounds good and it makes sense and it's hard as fuck and like you're on the beat and like you're delivering it with confidence and you're so ahead of yourself that you're able to like Hit it with some confidence, even though you're fucking just making art out of nothing, out of air. You're fucking making magic happen. It's like, that feeling is crazy. I want to do that. And that was what alive is like a, a passion. That's what it is. That's what the passion is. Whenever you become alive and open to the idea of like, I don't know what the fuck's going on here. Maybe there's a better way forward. How should I live my life? And then like that thing that illuminates and calls to you, like that, that feeling of fucking, maybe you don't have that yet. Or no, it's hard to fucking find. That's the thing we're all praying for. Yeah. That's what we're all hoping for. That's what faith is. That's what belief in like a, a higher spirit is to at least a little bit of a degree. But that thing that calls you forward into that adventurous, like the adv adventure of your life, like the thing you're meant to do, the, the, the fucking, you're Lord of the Rings, you're fucking the Hobbit, whatever your story is. Yeah. Your Bill Bill Baggins moment where you fucking go out of your home and you go crazy, slay that dragon, get the fucking wealth. Yeah. It's worth doing. And I think that's why I fucking love that progression of death to self to alive. And then once you become alive and enlightened, or at least awakened to the idea that you don't know what the fuck's happening here, like once you strip yourself of your ego or have one of those experiences, it's like, oh, okay, I don't know what the fuck's happening here. Maybe there's something else out there that could like help me figure it out. Because if you want to figure it out, you'll, you'll, you'll figure it out if you really want to. But some people don't want to. And that's, that's okay. But you need to kill that part of yourself. <laughs> yeah. That's the other side of the coin. That's the mm -hmm. I can take full responsibility for this experience, mm -hmm. and if I did, there's no telling how ultimately awesome it could be. Mm -hmm. And that's a there's no telling. It's there's just no, there's it's no just talent. hard to sign up for that war. You just don't even know that there's an enlistment guy around the corner, your own personal David Goggins, <laughs> and you ready to sign the contract? You, you ready? ready? It's today the day. Yep. What about today? We're gonna put those shoes on and go for a run. We're gonna do that thing. We're gonna tighten up that resume. Yeah. We're gonna open that book, and we're gonna whatever the fuck it is, <laughs> dude. Fucking do it, bro. <laughs> you got me over here, bro. Do it. This is one of those moments where I know I'm gonna watch this shit and get inspired later on, <laughs> because I'm just like, that's it, bro. That's the, the there's always there's a, there's a conversation, there's a negotiation, there's mm -hmm. a you and a you at a table, mm -hmm. and there's a you that re that wants to do some shit. Like you said, it's like hard to be passionate about something. Like, it is, but, like, you also, like, you kind of know, like, there's this guy who's talking about, we have, like, these childhood embers of, like, things that we would have liked to have done with our life. And uh, for him, it was, like, he wanted to be, like, a, a jet pilot, and he wanted to be a rock star, and he wanted to be a, a football player. He wanted to be in a band. That was a thing that, like, you know what I'm saying? That made sense to me. <laughs> it made sense because it was a... When we were together, for sure. It was an outlet of this thing that we're talking about. Fucking mm -hmm. being able to whatever, bro. Yeah. You're eight and, years old. And then he said that, like, the... The, like, the keeping alive of the embers, the sprinkling on to keep the embers alive of those, like, childhood passions is what ultimately manifested into the, the things that he was able to do as an adult. And it wasn't necessarily like doing those things literally, but he's like, uh, that's what, how people could end up like finding their personal purpose or their passion. It's like start at the roots of like when you were a kid, like what did you dream about? What did you think about doing? What made, what, what excited you? Right. Mm -hmm. I remember being like, because my doctor would always ask me when I was a kid, it was like part of the physical checkup. Mental like, checkup. <laughs> Spiritual checkup. <laughs> yeah, right? Where's your head at, kid? Yeah, what do you... Uh, What's your heart in? One of the questions was like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Okay, I love that. How and, old are you? Uh, this was probably like five through ten. Okay. And then there was a point where I think like the earliest answer that... that it the, I, the first answer never makes sense to me. But I said like firefighter or policeman. 
Like uh, I want to uphold some fucking justice. <laughs> yeah, I'll be one of the good guys. I want to help people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be a good guy. Right. Some... I'll get the bad guys. I'll help. I'll help. I'll help the people. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I I never really remember having like that conversation as a kid. Whenever I was like ten and looking back at like the the files, you know uh, what I'm saying. But then it was like policeman, and then it was like uh, video game designer. When I was like six or seven, I was like, video games are crazy. Video games are awesome. Can I just make these? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. And, and it made sense because my dad was always on a computer. I don't know. Okay. But then I see. I'm pretty sure after that, at like eight, like third grade, I just wanted to be a professional athlete. Boom. And it was just like professional athlete, professional athlete, professional athlete. But there was, and like that, that when he was talking about the story about the embers and like, he was basically saying like homeless people have like the embers of their childhood dreams and wishes and things that excited them when they were kids. Mm -hmm. And if we spent more time keeping those embers alive, they would ultimately find purpose in our world. Like they could find a job or a career that would be like worth pursuing because I, it's hard to get out of homelessness. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But to like bear the responsibility of having a home and a job and keeping yourself alive and paying the fucking electricity bill, all of that shit, like what would make it worth it to them would be ultimately like, and then it rooted would, in that. Yeah. Right. Connected in some abstract way. Cause it's them. It's their fucking life. It's their tailor made experience. That yeah. would be the escape from the hell. The things I call to you naturally. Right. Investigate those. When you were and talking at about, the deepest roots, sorry, what are you saying? When you were talking about passion, yeah, yeah. the same like thing in me rung deep is like, how do you find passion? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I think it's the embers of, well, something along the lines of what that guy was saying. It's, like it's in there, it's in you. Like, yeah, we wanted to have a band when we were kids. Yeah, but like that idea like died and then like was gone for a long time before we were like, long time. Let's make music. Yeah, in this media, in this different medium. Yeah, right. We're gonna be a rock band. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna hit the drums. Yeah, and it made sense to me. Like I, I was taking guitar lessons, and my dad played like six instruments. So in my mind, I'm like, well, you could just learn any instrument. You know what I'm saying? My dad's mm -hmm. just like taking the time to learn all these instruments. So then that's tight with this thing that we have going on, like you and me though, it's like, well, we'll just learn every instrument. Like, fuck it. Like that part, the work doesn't really matter. It's like, what do we want to do here? You know? Yeah. Yeah. What's worth learning. Learning is all of our superpower. We all mm -hmm. have the ability to learn something. Right. Integrate unknown information, incorporate it, and then be able to act differently because of that. And have a different output and a different result that gets better the more that you do it. So it's like, we have a crazy superpower. It's like, what the fuck do you want to use that on? And I was thinking about that while I was going through like the insurance stuff or like thinking about anything. I was like, I can learn anything. If I just fucking sat down and wanted to learn it, it's like reading. It's like you would read shit that you're interested in. That's the, I, I want to go to the Jordan Peterson Academy. Right. <laughs> like I want to sign up. I fucking want to do it. I don't I haven't looked at how much it is. I got the email cuz I'm on the email list. Come on. For early enrollment, you know what I'm saying? Let's go. And I'm just like, I want to do that shit cuz it's like what's worth learning? Mm -hmm. It's like that's a difficult fucking question to ask. And I do feel like you said in maybe I think maybe you were just a more honest person when I asked you, did you know what you wanted to be when you were going into college? Because, like, I had some idea of what I wanted to be, but did I actually know what I wanted to be? Fucking no. Mm -hmm. I was just, like, telling myself some story of what, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And also, like... <laughs> like we're doing. Yeah, regardless. And maybe yeah. you just had a more honest ap approach to it where you were, like... I feel like a general studies major sometimes just in life. Or I'm, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, I'm not exactly sure what the right thing to do is all the time. You know what I'm saying? You got to, like, feel that thing. And like, yes. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck I was talking about, but... The passion fuels a lot of that. The yeah. passion is what keeps it, like, me attuned to, like, I'm warm when I'm doing this. Like, this feels like what I want to do. Yeah, you'll feel it. Because life's a feeling process, man. If you open your... Uh, who knows? I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I guess <laughs> yeah, what we're saying, it, makes, it made sense to us as a kid uh -huh. through, the, yeah. through the band. Yeah, yeah, to the band and to pursue the music. And then just, yeah, it's just so strange, though, that, like, the... The way that life played itself out allowed me to stumble into a thing that, because I wasn't even the, we weren't the precursor to like, let's start freestyling. Like we were just hanging around people who were freestyling. And then that yeah. just, 
yeah like, entered our culture entered How? our matrix and we we're like this is awesome <laughs> And like just, listen. and it was right. It was awesome. We would like, yeah, even just listening. Whenever we were t- like, you would, I guess, typically you would put the phone in the middle or whatever you were doing on the computer, play the beat, and then you would usually go around the circle to a degree sometimes or whatever, whatever was going on. But even whenever you're listening to other people, it's like you get that feeling of whenever the shit's popping off. You're just like, oh shit, this feels great. You know what yeah, <laughs> what is this? It's crazy. It's crazy. It's the magic. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just the way that life played itself out. Looking back, I could see all the all the dots connecting. Thinking about, I was in fucking choir in sixth grade. <laughs> For, Fuck yeah! Fuck all some yeah. random shit. Yeah, I was in choir. Like I was in choir in sixth. Grade. I think I may have already mentioned this on the pod previous, but I'm saying it again. I was in choir in sixth grade on some random shit, and then my senior year of high school, I had enough credits. <clears throat> or I guess I had enough. I filled in all my classes, so I had enough time for like one more free period, for one more elective based class or whatever. And then I ended up getting, I didn't pick a class. And then I guess whenever I was doing registration the year prior from junior year to senior year, but then I get my senior year schedule the first day of school. And then my last period class on the B day is music theory AP on some other random shit. I was like, oh, that's wild. <laughs> you should take this one, bro. Just looking back. I'm looking back. It's like, that's a weird connection. That's a weird connection. That Taylor made experience, bro. Who wouldn't want Slumdog Millionaire type shit? That, why does that movie hit? So that movie hard? hits. Yeah, it does. <laughs> we talked about it a year plus ago, but it fucking hits because that's the truth it's talking about. Is the tailor made aspect of the singularity that you're experiencing? Yes. So you're the singularity and you're the fucking collective or the entirety. That's Same time. A difficult thought to manage and process, but it's a lot. Or you're connected to it at the very least. Yeah, at the very least, I'm not saying you're wrong. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, we're made in God's image. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What, what that sentence means is like you spend your whole life trying to figure that out, and it'll evolve and mean something different to you. I think as you get older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the way, like whenever you're re- rewatching a show or rereading a book. Yeah, you know, the person you're, the person you are. The book's the same. The media is the same. The art's the same. I guess, but like it's different because you're a different person whenever you're reading it, and like you're able to pick up different, interpret different, conceptualize different, and like make connect different dots, and like see dots you couldn't even see before. Like in rewatching Game of Thrones, I was like, man, this show is so fucking good. It's even better the second time around. It's even better the third time around. <laughs> That's how I feel about two twenty five on the bar. Yeah, better the second time around. Ugh. But a third time around. <laughs> no, but the same thing hit me with working out too. Like same thing, same weights, mm-hmm. same squat. But it just like as I get older, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I just see different things. Like I feel different things from it. I have a different appreciation for it, different respect for it, different love, different hate. Yeah. <laughs> it means something different to me. Yeah. But it's especially crazy in books. I remember my mom trying to express that to me when I was a kid. Just like, as you get older, you got to keep reading these books because, like, it, it, yeah, as you get older, it'll grow with you. Mm. But that's, that's hard. It's a hard thing to conceptualize as a kid. But then when you start it's seeing hard. it happen, you're like, whoa. Game of Thrones the second time around is bananas. You catch it. You really catching like worthy of a second run. Oh, absolutely. Really, the second run is better than the first. Wow, <laughs> for sure. People say that, and I'm just like, if you've never seen it one time, anything. If you've never seen it once, <laughs> and they're like, second time is definitely worth it. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, damn. You had to run it back. <laughs> you had to run it back, dog. You got to run it back. And yeah, the the lady is in complete agreement. She's like, oh my god, this is so much better because I'm able to follow it, or like I'm able to. Like you're just kind of the whole time you're just like what the fuck's happening, and a whole bunch of crazy shit's happening like all the time every episode it's like crazy shit's going down, but it take it's hard for you to you, to understand who the characters are how they interact what the dynamics are the nuances of their character development what's happening who's related to who who fights for who it's like who's married to who it's like all fucking it's <laughs> there's a lot of shit going on here so it's so it's so much it's just like Harry Potter but like the the whole fucking it's just all about or there's so many just different names and houses and like a whole country and a whole history to this country <laughs> or to this land, these lands, these seven kingdoms. So there's a whole bunch of information. So the ability to see it all once and to have a loose understanding, let enough time pass for you to forget a lot of the major events or not the major, major, like you'll, you'll never forget some of the stuff that happens. Cause like, but whenever you rewatch it and then that shit's, you're able to have enough of a foundation to like keep up. With the pace of the show. Because the show's running like a, mile, a million miles a minute from the jump. 
Nice. It's just like, oh, there's a whole bunch of backstory here. There's a whole bunch of nuances. Like, there's already a whole bunch of like, because it starts in the, or like, seventeen years past a rebellion. So it's like life is happening, rebellion happens, the war ends. Seventeen years happens. Okay, now here's what happened. Seventeen years after we rebelled and we won, and now here's the landscape of the land. We killed all the motherfuckers who were running things. Now we're running things, and that's where it starts. Damn, that's saucy. <laughs> so it's like all that backstory. It's like you don't know any of that when you're watching it the first time. So it's like, wait, what? Why is that important? Who is that? How are they related? And so then now she has enough of an understanding to be like, oh, this run is great. This run is this is the run. This is the run. Am I getting dragged? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, damn, that's tight. It's 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 it, yeah, yeah. That's it's, awesome. it's so worth it. It's so tight. So many nuances. It's so good. So good. Speaking of good TV, I loved Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Oh, you with Donald Glover? The fucking boy. He just the man. Just does the miss. legend. He's a legend. He's my favorite. He's my favorite rapper. He's my favorite. That's that's my guy. Dude. That guy inspired the shit out of us, <laughs> dude. I I saw Mr. and Mrs. Smith and I heard Yo Shinoda, like Yo Shinoda, yeah that song, and I was just like, that's a lock for me. <laughs> Instantly number one. Locked it in. He he can at any time. I he need can, to hear that song. At any time he can make. What the fuck we deem a banger at any time. Mm. He's just doing other shit, which I appreciate. He's being a creative. He's let his passion lead him. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. That now that I see him in that light. Yes. Now we're old enough to see. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, you're my favorite artist for sure, actually. Yeah. You have like a truly creative entrepreneurial spirit. Not yeah. an entrepreneur per se, but like well, creative. He made, yeah. He made fucking Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you yeah, know? He made Atlanta. Yeah. So there's something there about entrepreneurial or like he wants to venturing out into different realms just fucking conquering just (laughs) just going bananas that show's so good it has 16 emmy award nominations really yeah son of a bitch it's going fucking bonkers dude wait mr mrs smith or atlanta mr mrs smith oh shit okay cool that's that's on amazon right yeah okay and it's one season is it done is it one one and done or is it uh the, the ending is um People are hoping that it gets renewed. Okay. But just hoping it gets renewed. But like a, it hasn't been renewed yet. Like Your Honor? Yeah. Like, uh, mm-hmm. wait, what do you mean? I think Your Honor, I'm not sure if there's a third season going to come out or whatever. Okay, you know what yeah, yeah. But yeah, similar mm-hmm. to that. Okay. Where it's like, the door is open. Nothing definitive. Exactly. I don't, I don't want to do it. No, 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 no spoilies. No spoilies, <laughs> no spoilies. But it's definitely open to interpretation. Okay. And uh, people are re- really, really hoping. And it got 16 Emmy Award nominations. That's a lot. That's a lot, dude. I don't know how many... What's the maximum amount? But that's more than one is a lot. Yeah. You start getting... One is them, great. You know, you'd have to get Good a... Job. Good, <laughs> Good job. Good job. Good, Good job. 16? Yeah. And those are like... Those type of awards are like best screenplay, I guess best lead actor. Or yeah, like, best sound effects. Some, okay. Some of them are less like golden awards you put on your mantle you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but definitely 16 is a lot yeah i'm sure they have some crazy nominations in there yeah i'll pull it up right now just yeah, let's, to, fucking, let's do yeah, it let's look it up for the people mr and mrs smith dude i just want to say that, you, that run you were really taking us through um what death to self alive and passion was and what that meant and what the truths yeah. were there and where that like really came from and that shit was yeah. powerful yeah that's the best representation of our brand i've ever heard ever <laughs> that, that's my dog that's what it's about right there that's what it's about if you ask me about my artistry that that's that's what we've been doing. that's it that's what we've been doing that's where it comes from so the art we've been making and we never we, we never we didn't plan that none of that was planned we didn't plan that progression into those three tracks or those three projects no but i'm also like like it makes sense to me though yeah it's what we experience or it's what i think happens here it's a really dope representation of because I'm writing the story of my life, more or less. And I think that's a really great representation of what the story of my life has been. So I'm mm-hmm. happy to have... I love it. You know what I'm saying? I love what we did. I feel like we really like... Yeah, we could do a better job here. Do this thing better. Get better. Get better. Sure. Of but course. I'm like, those are my dogs. Like, that shit's tight. Yeah. Good job, guys. <laughs> Good job, boys. Yeah. Way to keep going. And we grew a lot from... What was our first album? Surreal. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you thought about that lately? Brother. All I know is that whenever you play Surreal, that first line, the... Yeah. 
Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. If you ever needed a beat in college, Justin could just make one <laughs> yeah. on the fly. That was that song is great. That song is tight. But that was ironically, it's the first song on the album. Was the last song that we wrote. Mm, it was because we were just fucking just progressing like madmen, like madmen. Mad men. We were. We still are. <laughs> and we, we still are. Every so we're not we slowing make. down actually. We're like increasing tempo. It's like, oh my God, we're getting faster. The faster is getting faster. I'm I'm recognizing it's getting recognizable. The the, the speed increase of the speed increase. Yeah. Like, oh my goodness. Yeah, I felt it yesterday for sure. It was so cool to be like sober and just chilling. And I was just like, no, I don't really need to like change my state too much. I'm just like, let's get creative. What are we doing? I was like and just like streamlining creativity and it was just like boom 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 boom. tapping into the well come on yeah bro and that was just such like a good feeling i was just like okay yeah like i can do this we can do this anytime Mm -hmm. but it's like very difficult to just pull up to a studio and write a good song Mm -hmm. like five years ago we were doing it we were fucking doing it but it's still a difficult thing to do you know 100 percent. but i feel that like right now we're really on the swell of just like crashing bro it's sick wave after wave Way back to way. Yeah, that was a long time ago. 2018, I want to say. 2018. That is six years ago. Right? Right? Yeah. Yeah, two plus four is six. That's a lot of progression. Even, yeah, even just from the Lost Pack, Death to Self, to now. It's like we're still just continuing to evolve and grow and yeah i'm finding out what more works what doesn't work expression. figuring out how to sing how to rap how to be spontaneous how to make good art you know what i'm saying how many anything's you have to do what if you have to make ten thousand songs to make a good song it's like fuck <clears throat> let's get started <laughs> <laughs> yeah right <laughs> Made a whole bunch of songs in high school, or I mean, in college. <laughs> but we're getting better fast. Freestyling quick, and oh yeah, I think I mentioned that too. And I was talking about like that feeling that that was like the passion, the that passionate feeling of that feeling of being in the moment, crushing a fucking freestyle, just getting being able to get ahead of yourself, and like that feeling of being on fire, or like just watching yourself fucking just <laughs> <laughs> fucking getting it, bro. Bees in a trap, be, going bees nuts. in a trap. It's like oh. This is crazy. Like, yeah, the rhyme schemes out of nothing. Like, that's like the craziest part. I think it's awesome. But now I think that's transitioned into like I think that that that's, that was like the initial call. Like the, you know what I'm saying? Like the oh, I like that. I'm gonna pursue that. And then in the pursuit of that, that feeling has just it's still the same. And I still feel that if I freestyle in the car or whatever. But it's also evolved into other facets of my life as well. To like that like bring me more, tell me to go forward towards that direction. And those things are like, yeah, like whenever we're, we're like in the studio and like I ha- already have the beat, I already have it done. And like I'm recording the song and like that's like a different feeling. And like performing, it's like that, that's, a, that's like a, a different version of that same thing. Or whenever we're doing a podcast and we're fucking in the middle of a riff and we're killing shit or like we're on a funny fucking bender of like jokes back and forth or a story that's funny. Yeah. It's like that's a great feeling, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And finding like a good clip and being able to cut together a good clip with some good little overlays and it's like oh it's a good clip it's like a good feeling you know it's, or it's like that's that that same good feeling is a, is the same initial passion that led me out of the fucking desert forward it just looks different and I guess yeah. in other facets that was like a more musically specific facet but I also feel it in working out that was another big thing it's like mm. I'm gonna make this I'm incorporate this into a part of my life too or into a part of my day to day operation week to week operation in this body thing. And that was another good good feeling of conquering that thing or being able to like see it, set it, go do it, and then like feel good about it, and then being able to progress through time to like a goal. It's like, okay, yeah, I put on fucking I did that or I lost that weight or I put on that weight or I did that I hit that rep or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. Like that was such a like, yes, I want to incorporate that, that thing. Yeah. That's part of the passion too. But then, like, specifically, I guess that was also a pursuit that led to the idea of trying to be a personal trainer. Right. I was like, maybe I should do that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, me too. I felt that at some time, too. Right. Because it was, I was real passionate about fitness, you know? You're helping, helping people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But it's crazy because now the thing that we're doing is, like, content creative. Like, we're going to incorporate that, too. It's like, it's another facet, another branch of the tree. Yeah. Of MJ38. It's like, nice, dude. It's better than you could have imagined, kid. Far. Way better than working at that office job you could have taken. Holy shit. You know what I'm saying? Imagine if I took that promotion. Like, 
Now imagine if we can make more money than you would have made taking that promotion, doing this shit instead, right? It starts to get fun. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> it starts to get like exponentially wild, and I think that's the that's the thing about exponentiality is that when you get that weird that first times four this way, it's just so weird. You're just like, oh my gosh, like things are good, things are going my way, like life is, like. I don't know, not not out to get me or like I'm not stuck. I guess that feeling is crazy. Mm-hmm. The feeling is like surreal almost, you know. Yeah, that uh, we're all just living in our like headspace or like living in the result of our headspace, like the feelings that we have and our emotions. It's just such a feeling process, bro. I know we've mentioned that so many times, but we get that from Big Sean, one of our foundational pillars of how to progress forward, what's happening here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who are your foundational pillars of what's happening here? It's like, we have some good ones that have stood the test of time. Yeah, I've That's gotten what? to the place where all, all I know is that I have to go with that feeling. And like... That's when I, then I realized what he's talking about. You know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then you start integrating that awareness of what he's talking about into the more nuanced part of your life. So you just feel it, you know? Fucking palpable. Like temperature. Bruh. On fire. Yeah. Are you pulling up uh, stats? I got them. Let's go. 16 nominations. 16. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Outstanding drama series. Outstanding lead actor in the drama series. Donald Glover. Come on. Outstanding lead actress in a drama series, uh, Maya the lady. Erskine. Yeah. Got it. Outstanding writer for a drama series, Donald Glover. Come on! Outstanding music supervision, outstanding stunt coordination for drama programming, outstanding casting for a drama series. And that was the top seven. Those are the big ones. Chat GPT said. Those are the fucking big ones. Dude, come on, bro. Our he guy's acted nasty. and wrote it in it himself. Come on, he's fucking nasty. I told y'all in my college communications class <laughs> back in 2011, this guy's going to fucking blow up, dog. He's the craziest man on earth right now. He's cracked. And he's at that time, quick. he had already wrote for, or written for 30 Rock, was acting in community. Childish Gambino just dropped camp. It's just like, and he was a stand-up comedian. Yep. It's like, bro, this guy's nuts. <laughs> but he proceeded to be more and more nuts. Yeah. Why were we so fascinated by that? Why? Just drawn, just like, that's it. That's the fucking it that I want to have. Yep. If I could ever do anything, I want to do that. Because he's doing all things. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Renaissance man with a Hollywood buzz. I refuse to go back to not liking who I was. Come on. That was fundamental bars that I built my life around. I don't know where that came from. I don't know where that came from. It came out of my being. It came out of the depths of my soul. We're going through my code and you came to a line that's just an audio file. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is this? Yeah. It's a fucking audio sample that lives in my DNA now. Yeah. I'm going to pass on to my children. <laughs> because I think I've seen that artist live in show in concert more times than I've seen anybody else. It's like, mm-hmm. why? What, what is it? If you're just looking at the stats of my life, you're like, whoa. What is this disproportionate? This means something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like I was literally drawn. I was literally like, I, I just believed that there was something there that I thought was. This is worth the sacrifice of my time to go do. That's what I'm fascinated by. Interested in. My fanhood goes to this. My, uh, like, I, I wanted to digest his music more than I wanted to digest other music. Even if I, like, the other, the other music was deemed better, mm-hmm. you know? Like, it didn't matter because it was like what he stood for what he represented was what i wanted to brand myself as mm-hmm. and Identify i identify with yeah and i did that through fanhood you know yeah yeah bro fucking love that guy outstanding actor outstanding writer and that's yeah we were talking about yeah culture like great writing good artistry is what fucking runs this shit he's a great writer and it's like that's that is awesome <laughs> it's fucking awesome yeah it is so cool yeah, there's moments in Mr. That, life, Smith that are like... It's great? Yeah. I loved it. I loved the series. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. Nice. I liked... Um, different episodes were themed differently. Like, there's just one in- episode that sticks out in particular where it's like generally in one location. And I just like got to the end of my thought. Like, halfway through... Three quarters of the way through the episode, I was like, oh man, like this can't... They can't shoot the rest of the series like through this format. Like... It's been it's been strange that this whole episode was in this format, and then it got to the end of the episode, and then they like ended that format 
with the story and i was just like oh yeah okay and then the next episode was like back to doing some other shit you know mm. so i feel like it was a nice like they wrote it so that each episode can be like enjoyable and palatable and it's not like the same thing you're not just watching one long car chase you know okay it's cool it, it's so it's mr and mrs smith but donald glover's twist and i saying it's his twist because he's the one getting credit for the writing so i don't really know if it was him <clears throat> but it is now it is now <laughs> <laughs> uh that they take it, it's it's on relationships like the show isn't about them being like spies like the show mr and mrs smith the concept is like a husband and wife are secret agents that at one point get turned against each other mm-hmm. that's uh and and then the nuance of them being secret agents in a suburban life is like the comedic twist the irony the similarities between what it would be like if you and your husband and wife were actual killers contract killers but still had to play family like what where would mm-hmm. the crossover be well you know? yeah how that play out and I think that's what is enjoyable about that concept, but rather turning it into like a shoot 'em up action thriller with a bad guy. Maybe they come together. It's like more fixated on the the relationship aspect of like being with somebody and living with somebody and um, what being in a relationship's like and fighting with somebody. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was good. It was like really good art. Like I felt like good me job. and me and my girlfriend were both pretty moved by it. Honestly, we were like. I could tell that we were both like, I love this guy and I love this art and I like want to, I want to like, like in there, they reference a book in the movie called the prophet. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, I wonder if the prophet is just a metaphor for the alchemist because everybody reads, she says it's her favorite book. And then he says that he's read it, but he didn't actually read that book. And then it comes up like later when somebody else is like, Oh yeah, something from the prophet, and then she's like, "I love that book." Blah 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 blah, and he's all like, "Oh yeah, you love that book," and it's like, "I thought you read it." And then he's <laughs> like, "I never read that book." <laughs> it's, it's like a whole thing. It's hilarious, right? It's good writing, right? Mm. And then I thought it was the Alchemist, and then we both wanted to read the Alchemist because we just wanted to keep that show with us somehow. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like we were, we fucked with that's that. tight. That's good. Yeah, that's good art. Come on, yeah, that's bro. What, what we what we what do we want in this life, bro? Let's realize that's, that's one of the things that I want. I just love. Waking up early, working my fucking ass off, getting home, or even if I'm working at home, if I'm if I'm at home, I'm still working. What what the fuck ever? If it gets to a certain point in the night where it's like evening time, okay, we're gonna start winding down, eating some food, enjoying good art. That's what the fuck I love to do. Yeah, that's it's that's gotta be it. that. That's my fucking. I love it so much. I, I love it so much. <laughs> But turn into Donald Trump. I love it that much. It's that good. My love. It's huge. You can't find bigger love. Mini man. We dead the pony. I can't hear you. <laughs> Even <with> the... <laughs> yeah. It's my favorite thing to do in the world. I uh watching some good watching Your Honor was amazing. Watching Breaking Bad. I felt bad last song. weekend because I was just like, so are we getting back to Quesadilla and movies anytime soon? <laughs> <laughs> like to be that guy but uh sometimes on that like sunday especially I'm like i'm trying to land this plane with some nice food and a great piece of art but and mr and mrs smith did that for me perfect love it we, we love it we saved the last episode had a nice meal Is that good watch the last episode gas gas you gotta give it its attention we gotta give it its due yeah Gotta be fully present for this last episode. <laughs> Realize how ritualistic life gets mm-hmm. when you're like trying to. You got. I, mean, I can't start. I can't start it because she's not sitting down yet. Yeah, like, no, we got, we're not ready. She can't sit down yet because the moment's not ready. It's not ready. <laughs> That's the bit. That's the. We're not ready. We're not ready. We need the. <laughs> we gotta. We gotta turn the thing on. He's like moves the chips. Okay. I think we're ready. <laughs> she sneezes. <laughs> it's like, Damn. <laughs> Kleenex is winning. Kleenex. Clorox. <laughs> Because it feels like I was sitting there, I was like, ah, I just want to eat and watch the movie. <laughs> but we're just we're humans. We're so funny. We love it. But dude, yeah, I realized that's one thing I love to do, bro. Fucking just love watching Game of Thrones or a good fucking piece of art that someone wrote. I'm like, man, this is great writing. If it's great writing, it'll hit you. I guess everyone has their own interpretation of what's good writing. I guess what else has been on lately? The Olympics. The Olympics are on. I haven't really seen much. I've just looked at some of the stats, and some of the scores. The Olympics. Yeah, the Colts. Fucking Olympics going off. We won the 100 USA. 100 meter dash. I don't know. Won it by a nose. We did? Yeah. Oh, really? That's fire. Yeah. Was it the young kid? 
Uh, I don't know. I think his name is Noah Lyles. Oh yeah, I want to say fastest man in the world. In the world. Yeah, officially. I think Usain Bolt got upset. Someone got upset about himself calling himself that. But apparently, if you win the hundred meter dash, you are the fastest man in the world. Yeah, you should have. You should have competed if you're faster. Yeah, Usain. Do you think you can beat him? Like right now? Let's go, <laughs> dude. I want to see Usain Bolt, Tyree Kill, this guy, Noah Lyles. Noah Lyles. Who else do we got? Who else is even close? Devon A. Chain. Okay, get him out here. I'll take him. Get him out there. Come on. Come on. We'll take a lot of the Miami Dolphins offense. <laughs> we'll take like four players. There's definitely someone ran a four two one. Oh, Xavier they, Worthy. There it is. Yeah, he's we'll, worthy. Yeah. He's worthy. Of a he's spot. worthy. <laughs> Dude, he was number eight for Texas. And I just saw like Worthy flying across my Instagram screen, making a one handed catch for a tud. And I was like, like, save, <laughs> sets his phone background. <laughs> <laughs> just hit just his name. Just hits so hard. You worthy. Know? I was like, oh, I'm drafting that boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Chiefs are, they're just villains. I was like, he ran what? <laughs> he got drafted by who? I was like, my God. They're really just, they're looking for that piece. Yeah. Well, Tyree left a hole, but they still got two chips back to back. Give a fuck. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? What hole? Like, the hole. <laughs> they're fine. Yeah. That's banana sandwich. You know, they signed this kid, 4 2 one With, with who at running back, dude? Pacheco. For the last two years? Pacheckies. But he's not like... Pacheckers. How, how come I can't play him in fantasy football? He's inconsistent. That doesn't translate? Inconsistent. This motherfucker doesn't translate. Their running back is like... <laughs> their running back game is soft. Or they don't use it or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's because it's weird because I had... And I'm in another league where I have Patty Mahomes. And he doesn't score a whole lot of points sometimes. You know? But they win games. That's the thing with them is that they fucking win. Yeah. When it matters. Like when it comes time to it, they can fucking play with anybody. They can win on any given Sunday. I don't give a fuck what the situation is, what the spread is, where they're playing. They yeah. can play with anybody anytime. Especially if it's in the playoffs and like the Super Bowl. Like obviously, they can fucking ball out. They've won three now, right? Yeah, they won three. They won 49ers, then lost to the Bucks. They didn't make it. Beat the Eagles, beat the 49ers again. So he's got three of them bitches, and he's been there four times out of the last five years. I think. Maybe four out of the last six. Whatever the math is. He's fucking balling. They can hoop. But he's not He's not putting up the same numbers without Tyreek. Or like he's not balling out of control fantasy football points-wise. Yes. I was like, damn it. He's not killing that. it. He's not fucking... He, he would have like 20, 20 points pretty consistently. Maybe like 30. But sometimes he would have like 15, 19, yeah. like 14. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? They still be getting dubs. And they still... But that's not worthy of a first round pick. Nah, it's it's, it's crazy. It's it's. I've realized that with them. Like, they they just win. Breaker. They just win. Yeah, they don't they don't really care about stats. I don't give a fuck. They just win. Ultimately, ultimately, football is. I mean, if your game plan worked on every play, that you would score like a billion points. Mm -hmm. But you you practice and think that your game plan is going to work. So all that happens is stuff gets in the way of your plan working. But like their talent level and their plan does work against anybody. Mm -hmm. So that's why like in the fourth quarter or the witching hour, whatever the fuck it is, they're just like, boom, okay, we're driving down the field and we're scoring and we're winning. It's like, it's just crazy, yeah, bro. Midway through the third quarter, it's like, oh shit. Like, there goes the tides. There they, there they go, a turning. Yeah. So <laughs> it's weird. like, boom, touchdown, boom, fumble, boom, touchdown. Oh shit. Different game now. I don't know how they do that. What the, where's that come from? Like the, that winter energy, that winter spirit? Maybe they're just like more properly aligned in their fucking training camp or their locker room or whatever. I don't know. But they're a crazy team. <laughs> He's a crazy individual. That motherfucker's crazy. Patty Mahomes, shout out. My dog. Loving Texas. Texas Tech Raiders. I wish I could study winning. It's a thing. Like Some people do. If you go up like 8 0. Napoleon Hill, I'm pretty sure, dude. That's, <clears throat> that's why he wrote Think and Grow Rich. Well, now I'm going to read that book. <laughs> I haven't read that book. People say you should read that book. That's one. Of, that's one of the pillars. That's interesting. That's one of the pillars. A book about winning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like winning in business, winning in sports, winning in. Tony Robbins kind of did the same thing. But those people, Jim Rohn, those motherfuckers. Wait, what were you gonna say? Study winning. When you go up on someone real bad, there's something in their spirit that's like I'm not having this, and they're just waiting for their moment to start having their way, lashing back, scoring their points. Like, and then if they have the skill to actually compete and come back, like just sometimes it's just like game flow and things happen and like people go up or I don't know, you know, 
but it's just crazy how like the flow of the game is like just something that so where you can predict like a, a witching hour where like hey, usually on average this is where stuff gets bananas this is where shit happens yeah it's like what is the predictor of that yeah maybe just i don't know <clears throat> stories stories in general get really weird halfway through the third yeah. quarter maybe we know or maybe i guess we've watched enough stories and have enough statistical data to look and see how many points have been scored in every quarter of every game has ever been played and then it's like we probably have the most points scored in like the fourth quarter or like the fourth quarter and plus a little bit extra you know what i'm saying it's like that's where the fucking points that's where the game is won ladies and gentlemen like <laughs> <laughs> something about the human spirit because we know it's coming point. we know it's coming to a close we're like oh, i gotta ball out kid i gotta leave it all out there kid i gotta go they're gonna beat us <laughs> yeah yeah at first you're trying to figure each other out it's like all right here we go but then it's gonna it's gonna come to an end it's like okay shit i gotta fucking we gotta we gotta make it happen we gotta make it happen the desperation mode that i'll do anything mode it's like I gotta run through this motherfucker right here. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta make a play. Yeah. I gotta make a play, kid. I gotta do the impossible right now. Task, ta- tasking yourself with the impossible, like legitimately. It's like I'm, I'm gonna fucking do something crazy right now. I'm about to, I'm about to go nuts. Yeah. I'm about to do some him shit. That's where that comes from. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> the one who's able to chase away all the snakes or kill the dragon or do the impossible thing. It's like wow, they fucking did it. It's a whole bunch of it's a coliseum full of people who think they could do that. All playing against each other. Yeah. We love it. We love it so much. <laughs> we fucking love it. It's coming back. It's, it's like killing back. a lion back in the day in the Coliseum. That was an impossible thing. You're like the fucking bravest men were out there with so swords trying to kill tigers and shit. And we loved watching it. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure we loved it. It was the shit. There was no TV or nothing. What the fuck else were you gonna do? Dude, go watch these. That's all we were talking about too. Duke it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, wearing jerseys and shit back yeah. then too. You know? Yeah, supporting your fucking champion, bro. Yeah. Like, I like what he stands for. I like what he talks about. I like the way he carries himself. I like the way he fights. Whatever. Dude, it got to a point where that was the most influential thing in the world. Yeah. Game of Thrones makes me like, man, like, oh, <laughs> that'd be a crazy time to live in, bro. <laughs> that'd be a we crazy would be time on to live some in. Savage shit. Oh, I'd be on some shit. I don't we'd think be we'd, on some shit. I don't think we'd ever talk. We'd just be working. Waking up early as fuck, doing our work, doing whatever the fuck we had to do, making our name, making our house, fucking the legacy, the legacy. So yeah, that's what the fuck I'm trying to do. Ain't much change with the name of the book. Right. Same shit. Just all the externals are a little bit different. Isn't it crazy how you're, you're drawn to that representation? What is it representing? You know what I'm saying? It's like what you're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. the right way to be. Because like there's so many different characters and like they all exhibit different qualities. It's like how do I how what do I think's the right how do I identify with and why? And what do I you know what I'm saying? It's a great so great. The characters, the main characters, fucking badass. Until it ends. It's <clears throat> the ending I've only seen the last season, the last two seasons like one time. Cause I wanted to wait, but George still has not come out with those books yet. <laughs> I might keep still. on in some space. Like he, I think we looked it up the other day. He started the first Game of Thrones book. The first book, with Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire. 1997. 1997. Y2K wasn't even really a thing you had to think about yet. <laughs> that was the first book. It was still 97. In 1997. Dude, we were three. The last book, the last book, the, the seven in the series... The fifth book is the most recent one to date. That book was released. I want to. Say, I, I don't remember. I know. I know. I've looked it up in the past. I want to say it's like 2008, 2010, somewhere in that ballpark. But it's like, bro, it's 2024, dig. Like, you're not gonna finish that. Like, what are you? What are you doing? I know he's writing a whole bunch of other shit. I'm sure for other video games or for other stories, screenplays or shows, whatever he's doing. But it's just like, bruh, you have to finish this. You have to finish this thing. It's a move, bro. It's a, <laughs> it's, it's a fucking play. Like I think he's gonna ride the wave until it literally gets to the very, very bottom. Like he got like two TV shows, and they're doing phenomenal. Yeah, I'm rewatching Game of Thrones. It's great. And then, like we're gonna watch Game of Dragons or whatever House of Dragons after this. I can multiple TV shows from a book you wrote in ninety seven. Ninety seven, cuz what? So yeah, whatever it's that good of writing, <laughs> whatever plan or vision he had for that shit when he was writing it, it's like all coming to fruition. Much like someone who would write a book about all that shit probably would go about his house and his legacy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I think the final plot twist 
He's just saving that motherfucker. He's just saving that motherfucking plot twist, you know? Which would be the final book. Yeah, he's gonna he's had some crazy shit because it definitely gets to a point in the Game of Thrones show versus the books. It's like the first book, first season are good, like in sync with each other. Second book, second season. Third book is like the third and fourth season. And then the fourth book and the fifth book are like the next like five, six, seven, five, six, and seven ish. But like once it gets into like six and plus, it starts getting into like the unknown territory of like what the fuck the actual story is gonna be. It's like that's it starts getting wonky because there's a, there's there's things there's characters and there's themes and like the 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 synch or not synchronicities but the alignment is not there anymore. So now they're telling their own story. I've I've had to accept the the show as a different entity. Oh. I was like, okay, the show is a different thing now. But the book that's gonna have because the the ending is not great for the show. It doesn't make a whole lot. Of, I guess it's 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 okay. It's whatever. I accepted it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I don't think it's amazing. It doesn't sound fun. It's not Breaking Bad. It is not Breaking Bad, but it's fine. But I think the ending of his actual writing of the books that's going to be, I think, fire, fire, <laughs> actually fire, dog. Like it could be the craziest story of all time. Yeah. But we're just waiting. I think the last time I looked it up, it said it was coming out maybe twenty twenty five. Wow. He's still pushing. Give a fuck. We're on his timeline. <laughs> I'll release guy. it when I release it. I don't know. He's got to be pushing 80 plus. Bro. He's got to be pushing 80. Bro. I hope I'm wrong. I'm going to look it up real quick. But I think he's an older gentleman. Bro, you're playing with fire. You're playing with some shit. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> just <laughs> pull with my emotions and shit. I'm playing with his emotions and shit. And shit. I think that he probably has a copy ready to go if anything were to happen. Because he still has two books left. Shit. He still has oh. books six and seven to go. It's, he's 75. Maybe 80 was a predictor. Maybe it'll come out. Maybe, Maybe when, he hits, when he hits 79, 80, he, he'll drop. Hopefully both of them by that time. <laughs> Dude. <if> one, <laughs> At least one. One comes out, my goodness. At least one of them, bro. I mean, he was born September 20th. Oh, September. Let's go. Can you imagine a? Can you imagine a world where there's still a Harry Potter book yet to come out? Right. That'd be fucking absurd. Wouldn't that be dude. fucking wild? Like, but dude, he's kind of a genius because Harry Potter came and went and came back and then went away and then we brought it back and now it's pretty gone. Yeah, the mystical beasts and where to find them and whatever else, the fucking secrets of Dumbledore, or whatever the fuck, whatever else is going on. But when he drops that book, shit's about to blow up again. Everyone's gonna start rewatching that shit. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I need to get ready for this. Run it back, dude. He's gonna run it. Yeah, he maybe he's a genius. Maybe he saw how good it was. Maybe he knew how good it was. He probably knew how good it was after book two, bro. It's dude. fucking great. It's so good. He's like, oh, this is some shit. Like, I'm fucking. These are some bars. I'm dropping bars on them pussies right now. And like, I can see book three and four right now in my mind. Okay, okay, I can see how I'm gonna. I can. I can land this plane. Hopefully, hopefully he's on that train of thought. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's just like out of inspiration. Dude, that hit like a bullet in my chest. Like, if you really knew how good your idea was, how patient would you be with it? How much would you scale it? How much would you be willing to wait? Yeah. Because Lord knows when he drops that sixth book, it's going to be fucking, it's going to enter the meta like that. Everyone's going to be talking about it. It's like, okay, finally he dropped this fucking book. Let's see what happens. Because we need to see if it's like, how much of it lines up? Like, what the fuck happens for real? Cause I've always had that feeling. I was like, oh my God, they're going to get ahead of the books. Being in college thinking about this like they're gonna get ahead of the books and it's gonna go to shit i don't want to watch it i want to be part of it i won't i refuse <laughs> yeah <laughs> i eventually caved in like 10 years later or whatever however long it was because it's not his writing it's not george R. R. martin's ideas no it's not it's he was not. a part of the show towards the end yeah i think he was helping i think he was helping and helping help. write an alternative timeline yeah or helping validate some things or helping i don't know i don't know the exact extent or the what what his input was or the final decisions who made the final decisions to write what it what they wrote how the characters progress and how things played out but I, all I know is that when that shit comes out it's gonna be cool it's gonna be crazy there's gonna be another one hopefully they both come out soon <laughs> it took him this long he's gonna wait his sweet ass time hopefully he doesn't pass for the love of God George take care of yourself do not pass before you finish writing these books <laughs> You better have an in-house doctor. Come on. Come on. Golly. Something oh, very yeah. passionate, Justin. 
Uh, 40. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty much at the end, huh? Yeah, I want to wander down, wrap her down. It's been so real, you guys. It's a good one. It's, been... it's a great life, guys. And girls. Whoever. Whomever. Woke up this morning, hit a lift. My mind looks so positive. <laughs> it feels so great. I have to. There's no question in my mind. There's no question. There's no question. Thank God we can get there. You can have that much conviction. Fucking make that, make that shit happen. It's so worth it. It's so worth it. It's fucking worth it. Subscribe, like, comment, share. All that fun stuff. We'll see y'all on the flip side. On the other side of the pillow. When the sun rises again. New music coming out. Passion. Check it out. It's gas. More to come. Everything's blowing up, y'all. Life is going so fast. The next time we record, who knows? In the next two episodes, we could have a different studio. Recording. Very soon. New backdrops. New mics. Blowing the fuck up. If you will. Quite simply. Blowing the fuck up. We love you guys. <laughs> we love you. See you next time. Peace. Rolling through the city to the light, y'all. Really ain't no telling where.